Hey Pisces, welcome to your weekly forecast for January 17th through the 23rd. This is going to be for Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. I am setting the intention for the 17th through the 23rd. However, you may stumble upon this video outside of that time frame and that's just fine. You're going to find it whenever it was time for you to hear the messages in the video. Keep in mind, this is a general reading for the Pisces Collective. Not every single, is, every single message will resonate. Take what does, leave what doesn't. Let's see what's happening here for Pisces, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Keep in mind, guys, the 17th is the night of the full moon in Cancer. And we'll be feeling this energy uh, three days before, three days after. Depending on where your placements are, depending on how sensitive you are to moon energy, and we know Pisces, you and the moon are pretty tight, uh, you may feel it well before, and you may feel it for a while still after, but we're going to connect and see what messages are coming up. The first card that's coming up here for our lovely Pisces friends is the Queen of Wands. If I'm not mistaken, please tell me, guys. Please tell me in the comments, those of you who watch the weekly forecasts pretty regularly. I feel like Queen of Wands may have come up for you last week. Um, or or it, it's been coming up for you guys, like, ongoing. Like, 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 like pretty frequently or pretty frequently in, in the weekly forecasts. Because you guys have had an ongoing theme. Uh, of like like stepping into this feistiness or being really tired of catering to everybody else and like you know like trying to be uh you know asking questions about the things that they're into or getting involved with their interests and so Pisces you guys have like this ongoing theme lately in the weekly forecast where it's like but what about me what about me? <laughs> right? So um, I love the Queen of Wands energy. Traditionally speaking, I know that a lot of people um, watch tarot readings for love and romance. And so the court cards especially are seen as other people. And that's not to say that this might not be another person coming into your situation, Aries, Sagittarius, or Leo. But in the weekly forecasts, I like to focus on you. I want it to be about you, less about other people. I do love reading separately on my channel. But the Queen of Wands could definitely be an aspect of yourself and characteristics that you're stepping into, regardless of if you have a significant fire sign placement. You know, if you don't have like a, a moon or rising or Venus and fire, it doesn't matter, right? These are characteristics that you might be stepping into. Uh, the Queen of Wands, her character or her personality, she's very independent. She is the life of the party. She's really funny. She's really... Um, <laughs> Uh, it rhymes with Lexi, starts with S. I'm not allowed to say it because there's certain words when you say somebody got upset last time and said, all you care about is monetization and all you care about money. It's not that. Yeah, sure, you get dinged for saying certain words, but there are certain words that if you say the video does not get um, circulated, like it, it gets killed in the algorithm. And I want people to hear the messages. So I avoid certain words for that reason. It's not that I'm like afraid to be authentic or anything like that. But um, she's very passionate. Um, she's very, as I said, independent. She has a very strong entrepreneur energy about her as well. And a lot of the times the Queen of Wands comes up for me in my readings when you are very beneficial to a lot of other people. Like people really, really benefit from having you around and you start to realize that and your eyes open up to that and you're like, you know what, I'm really doing this person a favor or in a work situation, you may be the kind of employee that makes your bosses or the companies you work for a lot of money. But when you speak up for yourself or you try to get a, a, a raise or a promotion or you have an idea on how to improve the system they don't want to hear it. It's like you're this golden goose and they just want you to shut up and quit and keep laying the golden eggs, right? They don't care about your conditions or what you need. So the Queen of Wands to me is like that point where you're tired and you're fed up with it. You're like, I know what I bring to the table and I'm tired of settling for less and I'm not going to settle for less. And there's this anger that comes with that. 
And this anger helps to motivate you towards change. So when I see the Queen of Wands, it's like you're tired of settling and you're reaching for more. You're reaching higher. And this anger is motivating you and propelling you forward so that you're getting results very quickly. You may be connecting with your anger at this time. You may be feeling a little bit more angry than usual. Don't label it as negative. Don't push it down. Don't push it away. Use it as fuel for the fire. Use it as motivation for change. Because when the Queen of Wands shows up, you're making really big progress in a short period of time because you're motivated and you're 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 reaching for more you're reaching for higher the next card that's coming up here for pisces is the chariot now this is pretty significant we have a full moon in cancer and if you are not aware the chariot card is associated with the astrological sign of cancer so the fact that this is coming up at this time of the full moon in cancer to me, this is Spirit's way of letting us know that Pisces, you're going to be feeling those cancer vibes. You're going to be in that energy. You're going to be in your feelings. You're going to be um, maybe thinking about family, right? Or, or, or things that is going to be very uh, important for cancer or, or um, a kind of uh, um, uh, associated with cancer. So this is going to be uh, something where you have your attention, your direction, your focus. You may be focused on your personal life and you may be focused on your relationships and the quality of your relationships. Now, the chariot card is a card of movement. And it's a card that can come up when we're coming into an energy of moving towards something, being focused on something. Um, it always makes me think of the quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson when he said, once we make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. So for me, when the chariot card comes up, there's a sense of like a uh, free will. You're in a situation right now where spirit is trying to teach you to exercise your free will. And you might be saying, okay, spirit, show me what you want me to do or show me which door I'm supposed to go down. And Spirit is saying, look, Pisces, in this situation, you have to learn that um, some things are about what you decide and what you want. So in this situation, you have to tell us which door. You have to tell us what the focus is, and we'll step up and we'll help you. But we cannot make this decision for you. This is one of those situations where we need to respect your free will. And so you need to make the choice. You need to make the decision. Not everything in our life is destined. Okay, not every single aspect of our life is planned for us. There are certain people we're contracted with uh, to meet. There are certain situations we're contracted to experience, but not every single aspect is contracted. We have wiggle room. We have, uh, we have free will. And so Pisces, this is a time of you getting really clear about what you want and going for it. And once you make the decision, things will begin to align. Things will begin to line up. Your guardian angels, your guides are going to step up and they're going to help you along the way. But you have to make the decision. The next card that's coming up here for Pisces is the Five of Wands. Now, the Five of Wands can come up when we have conflicts with other people or we're not agreeing or we're not on the same page of somebody else. The five of wands can also have a really positive aspect to it. For example, if you're self-employed, five of wands would let me know that your business is starting to get noticed, that other people that are in your field are beginning to notice you and they're seeing you as competition. They're taking note of you and they're like, oh, here comes Pisces. Pisces is on the scene. Here comes Pisces, Pisces is on the scene and they're competing with you, right? Like they feel intimidated or they feel threatened by your presence. You have thrown your hat in the ring, so to speak. They're taking notice of you and they're trying to compete with you. In terms of like if you have a, a job where you're working for somebody else, your coworkers might be giving you some attitude. Your coworkers might be competing with you and you might be noticing all of a sudden 
man, why are all these people all of a sudden like giving me a hard time or trying to one up me or trying to, you know, show me up because they feel threatened by you, Pisces. They feel intimidated by you. And so they're trying to compete. They're trying to show that they're better. So when these things happen, even though it can feel offensive and we can be insulted, take it as a sign that, hey, you know what? I must be doing really good right now because they've noticed me and they're behaving in this way. They must really feel um, intimidated by me or they must really feel threatened by what a great job I'm doing. So in a weird way, you kind of got to learn to take it as a compliment. But you may notice at this time that you have certain people that are um, kind of like minimizing what you're saying, or they're like trying to make it seem like you don't know what you're talking about, or they're always trying to correct you, or they're trying to act as if like, you don't know what you're doing or you're not, you know, you're not competent in what you're doing. It's not that it's coming from any basis. It's just that they need you to think that way about yourself so that you're not confident and you just kind of take the back seat. But we know Pisces, you're in feisty energy right now. Maybe the old Pisces would have been, oh my gosh, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. And maybe you would have taken the back seat. But that that is long ago. That is not the energy Pisces is in right now. The energy Pisces is in right now, you're going to say something and you're not going to take that. And so take it as a compliment, as I said, and just know that they're trying to kind of get inside your head. They're trying to get inside your head and make you doubt yourself and they're just trying to like intimidate you or, or into like not shining, but never let anybody keep you from shining, right? You need to let yourself shine. Now, your next card that's coming up here is the Seven of Swords and the Seven of Swords is a sneaky energy and this is going to come up in a couple of different ways, right? Some of you, okay, may be giving given certain opportunities in a work situation because you're getting trained for something bigger something more and seven of swords would say don't tell people what's going on don't share it with people some of you might have an idea about self-employment or a business or an invention or something and it's human nature that we want to kind of run it by friends or family or people that we know just to get like an opinion like hey what do you think about this when the seven of swords comes up you may be dealing with sneaky people and they're going to tell you oh no pisces i don't know i don't think that's gonna work and and i yeah no i don't think people would be into that and they say that on purpose because they want to take your idea and they want to beat you to it so seven of swords to me is like keep your cards close to your chest not everybody needs to know what you're up to right now. Not everybody needs to know what you're planning right now. It's not their business. Okay, so be cautious what you're sharing with other people. They don't need to know everything. In a work situation, you don't need to tell your coworkers, oh, hey, I'm going to get to get trained on this other aspect of the job or I'm going to get to, um, you know, help out with this special assignment. People don't need to know. Kind of lay low. One more thing that I see come up sometimes with the Seven of Swords is that if you're working in a work situation where um, like you're being given assignments, the Seven of Swords to me is like you need to cover your bottom. You need to cover your backside by documenting things and emails and following things up in writing because you might have someone that on purpose is trying to get you to seem like you don't know what you're doing. So for example, they might come in and they say, Pisces, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. But they're telling you on purpose to do it incorrectly. And you don't know that. You don't know they're telling you on purpose to do it incorrectly. Because what they're planning is when it comes back wrong and the supervisor is upset, they want to be able to say, oh my gosh, oh no, you know, I, I gave it to Pisces and I explained it to Pisces and I don't know, they must have not understood. They must not have been able to follow my instructions. They want to set up something like that. How can you protect yourself? Follow it up with an email. Hey, so-and-so, 
thanks for coming by. Um, I just want to confirm in this email that per your instructions, I am going to do X, Y, and Z. They might not answer you. They might not reply. But if you defend yourself and tell the supervisor, well, that's the way they told me to do it. And they might say, no, I never said that, Pisces. It's not my fault if you misunderstood me. I never said that. You heard wrong. That's not my fault. Oh, okay, let me just print out that email I sent you telling you what I heard. And you didn't respond. You, you, you didn't correct it. But I told you that's what I heard. I tried to follow up with an email. I tried to confirm in an email. And it wasn't corrected. But, you know, I did what I could to try to make sure that everything was being done correctly. And that way you cover your bottom, you cover your backside, and they have to respond. Well, Pisces did tell you that's what they heard. Pisces seems to have tried to double check with you, and you didn't get back to Pisces. You didn't respond. Right? So that is, that, that is a way in which you can protect yourself right? Or just other ways that you can have things documented or you can have things in writing. Because you may be dealing with some sneaky people who are really intimidated, who are very scared, and they might be fighting dirty like that. But you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be scared, right? You can know that you're, you're, covering, uh, you're, 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 you're covering yourself. You're keeping yourself safe. You're protecting yourself by having things documented and having things in writing. Uh, you may want to check out your moon sign and rising sign videos. Some weeks, your moon sign or rising sign video might resonate more for you than your sun sign. Uh, if you're looking for love and romance readings, I have the love readings for January linked in the description of this video. February love readings will be up soon. Uh, and you can keep an eye out for those. You'll see be seeing the notifications popping up soon. 2022 12 month forecasts are also linked in the description of this video if you haven't had a chance to watch the forecasts for 2022 just yet you know maybe set aside some time and check those out uh if you would like a private reading with me you can schedule a private reading with me by going to calendly.com slash amethyst angelite and you can schedule a private reading with me there I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and I'm wishing you all a wonderful, wonderful week. Take care, Pisces. Be well, my dears.